the market's been going through a kind of revisionist mode, and so have institutions. Do you think we're still in that mode? Or yeah, mm -hmm. a bit, sure. Kind of correctionist. What? You mean looking at history? Yeah, I, like looking at overlooked history specifically. Yeah. Um, even if that's well-known artists' work that they made that pay maybe wasn't so appreciated, or mm -hmm. um, or entire movements that we didn't pay attention to before. You know, all that's valid. There's a lot of people that poo-poo it, um, like, oh, let's work with only what's happening now. Let's not like get too wrapped up in what's happened in the past. Uh, but I think that's short-sighted. I think that there's a lot of things from the past that, like you said, have either been overlooked or not even looked at for various reasons. And you know, it's interesting to fit to f fill in gaps, um, and important too. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, in our case, and in most, I think, in case you, you, you find a you strike a balance. We still work with younger artists, um, sort of emerging, in a way. All the way through to um, estates. You know, we've just taken on the Robert Colescott estate. This is an artist who was extremely well known throughout his lifetime, but hasn't really had much attention um, for quite a while. What made you want to work with the estate? We've been looking at, like so many have, we've been looking at different histories and we're very involved with, I mean, of course, we do the Japanese, we do the post war Korean, we do post war Europe with Cobra. And we're also um, quite involved with, um, you know, African American work here, and are socially aware uh, work that deals with social justice issues. Has uh, that has that become more important to you recently? Abs absolutely, yeah, for sure. Because of the yeah, because it's like you know, we've been doing this for twenty five years, twenty four years, and you know, you 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 move through these different, you know, you you build something, you move through different movements, and 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 evolution in your own life and in a gallery's life or a professional life. And at this point, I think that if you're not um, cognizant or aware of, I mean, what's happening in the world uh, globally and, and, and specifically with America and um, politically, socio-politically, culturally, you know, I mean, it's like, this is it. This is the time. Like, this is this is the... A key moment. We've all been sort of uh, entitled to a certain way of being. And what do you mean by that? Well, the last, you know, how many years is, have we had this, I hate the word, but it's sort of a bubble. I mean, with, with um, a facade of equal justice in America, you know, where things feel, felt to be more uh, socially and equally just, uh, right. whether it's you know with gender issues or sexuality issues or race racial issues or you know uh, all these things. It, I think people actually, on, at least in in the art world, it seemed like that's what people felt. We had Obama as president. You know. Yeah. The economy was booming. There was a people were making a ton of money in the art world. It's like everything felt ever expansive and ever so utopic yes and then poink pop and that ve that veil's been pierced clearly mm -hmm. and the truth of where we are in america and the globe is now revealed you know if you walk go back and watch the ken burns documentary on vietnam and see some of the footage of you know the 60s that's in that film you know you're you, you wonder how much has really changed yeah in fact, how much improvement is there? You know, and you look at, you know, pick pick a topic. Whether it's Me Too or Times Up or Colin Kaepernick or, you know, Philando Castile or or Trayvon Martin or any of this stuff. So a lot of the art that we work with is actually dealing with a lot of these issues in a very direct manner. Okay, whether it's Sam Durant and the Lakota tribe up in. Minneapolis last year at the Walker Art Center, which had such a, 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 a tumultuous experience, but or showing his sign in Miami that says "End White Supremacy," or Henry Taylor at the Whitney Biennial showing paintings of uh, the shooting of Philando Castile. You know, right? Um, so yes, it's a very important component. What's the aim, or like, what's the anticipated outcome of that? Like, do you think art can change the world? Well, I mean. 
Yeah, sure, why not? I mean, you know, changing the world can happen in a minute, and that means just your world. Yeah. Right? You can't change the world uh, 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 in a macro manner, but you can certainly have an impact on it in a um, in your own way, which, which can then ripple out. And are many art collectors buying, you know, work that's incredibly direct about social justice? Is there a, is there a market for that? Um, well, yeah, there is. I mean, I, I think that if it, you know, a Henry Taylor, a great Henry Taylor painting is a great Henry Taylor. And if it's, if it's got that meat, that, that social justice meat in it, you know, it's certainly not, it's going, it's not going to turn anybody away. Okay. Some of it can be a little bit too, too much of a reality check, I think, for people. Well, because some uh, people want to just simply uh, escape, and, and that's you know that's okay too. Escaping's fine, but again, I think there should be a balance of both, which is why we like you know. You like to have it's not just from Kanye to institutional critique. It's like from Henry Taylor to um, Don <laughs> I mean, you're going from a shooting of Philando Castile in Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota, to highly reductive monochromatic painting from Seoul. So I'm cool with with all of it. Having all of it. You know, it's all f fantastic and valid. Mm -hmm.